Yes, indeed. Poetic justice sounds so sweet. Welcome back. At- I've been seeing a lot of old Ooh. school clips of Janet. You see what I'm on right now? And then they just mean? had the, uh, a challenge of that song, too. Really? Mm-hmm. What was it? Do it real fast. No. Why Rashawn you want to sing do- it? Pull it up. Rashawn sang it. I'm serious. Why you want to do page. it? I want to see you do it. Like, can you do it? No, I can't sing it. I'm not. So do I'm I saying sing? She, I, you can't sing. You crazy. In you can't sing. Rain. No. Come on, man. Your flat ass. What you? I've always been flat. So you've always. I don't even sing. talk. I don't even talk through my note. I can sing. I just been flat. You know what I'm saying? Flat line, flat voice. It's all good. Welcome back, everybody. This is She and I. I am your host, B Love. And like always, I have my very special host with me, India Marie. Ooh, India Marie and B Love, the husband and wife duo it. you didn't know you need. But you got us and we are here to stay. This is the best thing to happen on a Tuesday. Well, damn it, since Monday. Where are my manners? Give it up for you. Like always, thank you guys for listening. And if you are listening and not looking, that's cool. Because a lot of you guys do it that way. And I'm okay. But in your free time, go to YouTube. Check me out. Check us out. Let us know. Check Check her out. I'm so you saying me about things. But anyway, what you want play me to do it, with play. I want you to play it all out. I sound just like that. No. I sound just like that. <laughs> no. Come on. Y'all know I sound just like that clip. That's Rashawn. Yeah, I sound funny. exactly like her. Her page is like Rosita her. Marianella. I think I don't I know how to say spell it. that. Um, don't even worry about And she about didn't even have a lot of singing clips on her page. She got funny clips. She, she funny, but yeah, that was like a challenge going around a couple weeks ago. So I'm trying to get her to come on the podcast because she is funny and I do like Rashawn. And um, yeah, we're just going to talk, kick some flavor. Hopefully she'll come on, you know, Women's History Month. Congratulations to all the women out there. Y'all doing big things, man. Congratulations just for being a woman. You got good vaginas. I would never want to be a man. You're crazy as hell. Absolutely wouldn't. Why wouldn't? You know why? Because you would never want to go to work and have me be a stay-at-home wife. That's the no, that's craziest even, that thing ain't ever, even right? It. What I, do you mean? Even, were, there is so much power in being a woman. Like, I would never, ever want to be a man. I saw ever. a post that I'm going to bring up early on. I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way early on since you want to talk about there's so much pride and power and being a woman go ahead and talk let me pull it up it is like I, I don't know like I wake up every day and I'm very grateful that God chose me to be a woman Ooh, and I'm not just a woman a black woman on top of that on, like black woman. I, I am here for it I love being a woman I, I just I could have sworn I saved it let me go look on the ground I could have sworn man it was a like post pre- first of all like we can give life like we birth life me could never like. I'm waiting for you to never. get done so I can read the post. I'm, I'm trying life. to. I'm trying to give you time to pull up the post because you, you ain't pulled it up yet. I got John Moran over here dunking on people and everything. He was on. He's looking at the a, wrong stuff. Nah, I'm looking at John Moran. <sighs> looking at the wrong yes. stuff. See that that just he, know. he trying to talk his shit. Just he, know. he ain't even ready. He just ain't know. even ready. Just know it's somewhere in here. I'll find it later. But anyway, how was your week? Go ahead and tell us how was your week. Week was good. Um, you always ask me this, and I never know what to say. God, but exactly, it was it was a good week. I enjoyed the snow day. I feel like I, last week was like a rough. I don't know. It wasn't like a rough week, and I've, I've I've heard several people say this. Last week was just a long week. I ain't heard that yet. Y'all um, lying. I'm gonna find it. I'm determined to find this post. By the way, yeah, last week was a long week, so Blake wasn't feeling well. Oh yeah, well. Um, so. <laughs> our friend who watches Blake during the week, so that I can have a break, was not feeling well. Mm, so we didn't have her at all last week, and then Bear had to work a lot, and so this weekend it was just nice to chill. We didn't do too much of anything. Man, let me tell y'all, man, it was a busy ass week because boy, 
Owning a business, we're going to go ahead and get down to it, is the most stressful thing in the world when you are now trying to manage employees, this being one of them, too. There ain't nobody that needs to be managed. What? Oh I'm not. God. You, you, I ain't you, nobody you're that supposed to be, be the manager. That's the bad I, thing. Exactly. I'm not nobody that needs to be managed. How now, do you fire? The, the issues that happened last week, they had nothing to do with me. <laughs> okay, I found it. I wish I knew what kind of business he he, he did. Because it what everything that happened last week didn't have nothing to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah, that that was also stressful. <laughs> We took Blake to the doctor three times last week. Yes, yes, yes. You gonna tell him three about times? It? So we took him to. Okay, so the first, so I guess last Monday I tried to make an appointment with his actual doctor, his primary care doctor. Well, he was booked, but they was like, "Well, you can bring him in, and he can see another doctor." And usually, when I agree to that, it's you know not a bad experience. This time was awful. The other doctor gave us no answers. And so basically, mm-hmm. like, he was super congested and he had been sneezing and Blake does, like, he is allergic. We we did an allergy test on him last week, I mean, last year. And Blake is allergic to every sort of tree and piece of grass outside. And so I was like, darn, like, his allergies are just really, really intense right now. But I, everything I was giving him, like, nothing I was giving him was working. So... If you have like natural remedies other than like the natural, like the local honey, send it to me, please. Um, it, I've I, and we've also been doing like the regular medicine too. So he's been doing the Zyrtec, like he, like yeah, yeah, yeah. we have done. Finally, she agreed. We to have it. done it all, but the Zyrtec's not working though. So, okay. <laughs> so this doctor literally he lo- looks at the bumps on his skin and he was like, "Well, I can tell you what it is." It. I thought my boy had scabies again. But, but he didn't, thank God. I can't really tell you what it is. That was it. And he was like, so based on like what I you know what it might be, I can, you know, prescribe him steroid it's to on. take that. And so I was like, well, I'm not just gonna give him no medicine if you're not 100 percent positive about what this is. That's crazy. That's insanity. So I took him home. Reset, started giving him like some natural stuff and, you know, rubbing him down. And he just was not getting better. And so he, he had been fine. He hadn't had a fever or anything. Well, mm-hmm. Wednesday night rolls around, he spikes a fever. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. And at this point, he, had, he hadn't been feeling well for days. And I'm usually able to clear up whatever he has going on in like two to three days. And this Hold time, I just, was, I just couldn't figure it out. So we ended up taking him to urgent care. Bruh! And... Well, let me tell y'all something about every urgent care facility in America. <laughs> Nobody in the world is ever going to be in there. Like, I mean, it's well, let me back up. If you go into urgent care and there is nobody there in the waiting room and you think you're about to be in and out, you're not. Every time you go in, no matter if it's one person or 101 people, you're going to be in there for at least, at least two hours minimum when you go to an urgent care clinic yeah. when i tell you we walked in the waiting room mind you i was already tired from what i was going through all that week so i'm like indy i'm sleepy i'm about to you know what I'm, saying? I'm gonna feel like going he didn't want to take him he didn't want to take him he's it like can we cold. please hold wait on. till tomorrow hold on what happened when we took it what happened when we took it nothing not shit so nothing. i was, I well, was no, right no, no, no. the whole time no, i was right that's not true that's not true we got like a little bit of relief. Like, so I will say this the urgent care, we, t- we took them to Vanderbilt. And I like that urgent uh, care Pediatric clinic. urgent care. And they were more thorough than Man. the last doctor that we had seen on Monday. Yeah. And it's Wednesday. And the only reason why I wanted to take him into urgent care is because I knew that had we gone in on Thursday, we still would not have been able to see his it doctor. Was bananas. Because his actual pediatrician does not work on Thursdays. <laughs> Waiting for the urgent care, bro. I'm t- listen. So, Nobody we did. Was we, there were, but us. we were in urgent care for 2 hours. 2 hours. So, I'm on like on that Wednesday. I'm about to take a nap on a little bed. The little paper ruffles around. <laughs> Sound like fireworks. I couldn't get comfortable. Went back to sit in the chair, couldn't get comfortable. Mind you, we are in Tennessee. It went from that evening, or I'm sorry, that morning. It's about 68 degrees. Felt great. 
Yeah. All of a sudden, it was about to snow the next day. And it went from 68 to 38 degrees. And I'm like, what the fuck? And now Blake wants to go to the urgent care clinic. It's about... 8, 8 o'clock 30. p.m. Yeah, it was 8 o'clock when we left the house. We this bedtime is about 8.30. I'm like, oh, what's going on? And it was awful. It was awful. Yeah. Nothing so they told resolved. us that they felt like he was fighting a virus. They gave him a COVID test, a flu test. He didn't have COVID or the flu. So <laughs> that's good. Gave but him a COVID. They said he had some sort of virus. And so I was like, okay. So basically it has to run its course. Still no answers for the bumps. I mean, they're saying that the virus, I mean, you know, and the bumps are related. And we're just still sitting there confused. I think that they prescribed us an antibody. That So the first doctor pres- prescribed us a steroid. Hold on. You, you're missing the critical part right now. I'm going to hop in. They told us he had an ear infection. They told us that he had an ear infection, which was... So the first day, they gave us a steroid for we that don't know what the fuck was for. was a lie. And then the second day, they gave us... Or the, the second time we went, they gave us the antibiotic for the ear infection that Friday, he actually has an appointment with his pediatrician because it's his annual checkup and he doesn't have an ear infection. Mind you all. I never gave him the antibiotics. So and I, I they, they don't prescribe us a steroid and the antibiotics. Yeah. So I never gave it to him because it just didn't feel right in my spirit. And I got the wrong insurance. Keep that in mind. Well, I got the right insurance this time. It's just not good insurance. So every time they go to the doctor, my stomach starts to hurt. I'm like, oh, shit. I can't breathe. My lungs get tight. I get diarrhea. Every time these two, is her, Blake, I'm never going. But she gets sick, go to the doctor. She sneezes, go to the doctor. <laughs> That's Blake not true. scrapes his knee, go to the doctor. Like, man, put some out. What happened? To That's alcohol literally not on true. Shit, we man. do not go to the doctor very often. It would the they issue is all that the time. when bears switch companies in October, they just have very poor like, insurance. Piss the insurance. Mind. So his pediatrician says that he has really bad allergies, which is what I thought from the jump. He also has really bad eczema. Who knew? Um, cause like, he's never is really eczema had genetic? Eczema. Let me know, people. I need to know. I know um, I can Google it, but I want to hear from y'all because I don't have eczema. You got eczema? No. I've never seen the only thing you got is a birthmark on your booty. You don't have eczema. So, how do you get it? Is it passed down from person to person? So, I don't know. Um, and then apparently, know. he also has a skin infection. Um, none of this is contagious because Beard and I haven't broken out of anything. Um, and the, I don't I have no. Okay. Mm-hmm. We think he got the the skin, the bumps. We think it came from his gymnastics gym. So they nasty man. And Can't because of that, man. we're probably about to switch his gymnastics gym too. Got to get out of there because they got. Some... Um, sorry, Meredith. But we <laughs> are doing like we are on two weeks of this now, and he is still like constantly scratching and itching his skin. And at mm. this point, we're just like we don't even know what to do. We have a follow up appointment with the pediatrician. But if it doesn't clear up in like two days, we gonna be back at the doctor because I just I, I don't I don't like I said I don't even know what to do at this point. So that was the bulk of our stress mm-hmm. from last year. Not only that, last we week. had to have from last week we had to have some crazy schedule changes because, like I said, um, Lauren who watches Blake, she was Lola. sick and she sprained her ankle. It was just a hot mess. So she couldn't come at all last week, but I still had to teach these Pilates classes. So, I mean, it was like one day. I think it was Thursday. I had to teach. I had an 11 o'clock private lesson, and then I had to teach a class Mm -hmm. at 12. And I was like, well, Barry, I could probably reschedule the private, but I have to go to this 12 o'clock class because it's it's on the schedule. So I had to bring Blake with me. Super Bear dad met me. Super dad making shit happen at the happen. Pilates studio. Took, my took son Blake out to lunch. lunch so that I could teach this class. And then, as soon as I finished, I went met Bear, grabbed Blake. Bear ran back to work because he had a meeting at one thirty. <laughs> and me and Blake went home. I mean, like, and that that was like the for for the most part that was day our was day like every yeah. day last week every day was like that but we're trying so we to get better we are hoping that this week is a lot more smooth and just 
Just good vibes all around these God weeks. bless. <laughs> I miss working from home out there. If y'all know it, y'all, they got some work from home permanently. Let your boy know. Got it. The big bucks, though. Don't come half-stepping. Man, I forgot to tell you. Guess what? I'm going to tell you live on air. One of my homegirls got engaged. I'm so happy for her right now. I'll tell y'all for who it is, but just know it's one of my favorite people. It's one of my favorite people. She got engaged. Man, give it up for her one time. I have no idea who you're talking about. I don't know if she told everybody so I'm not going to say her name, but I'm extremely happy for her. And I can't wait to tell, every, to tell everybody because guess what? I'm DJing her engagement or bride or whatever party. I'm DJing. Give it up for me again. Type the name right here. Look, look, look. She's so. Stuff like well, that women be nosy. I'm telling Type you. The name. I, it, you know, women be nosy. What? See? Oh, I'm so excited. I'll send her this clip and let her know. But uh, yeah, man. So anyway, congrats to the homegirl and the homeboy too, which you know. That's it's, very exciting. It's I love that for her. Now, let me get to why I said that. I DJ the wedding this weekend. And he had to DJ it. So Bear was gone literally all day long on so Saturday. All, so, and listen, so it started, she just told you, from Monday all the way to Saturday, we've been cooking. We've been busy, busy, busy. When I got to the wedding, it was snowing. If y'all know me, you know <laughs> I don't like to be cold. If anybody out there, when it's cold, I don't even like going, man, it's, it could be somebody's birthday party, one of the homies that I love the most. I'm not trying to go outside if it's cold. <laughs> it's a cold world. Bundle up. I'm not trying to be there, but I did the wedding. It was amazing. It was beautiful. My lips got chapped because the wind was whipping off the water, smacking me in my mouth. It felt like I was eating an ice cold vagina. That's what it felt like. Wind blowing all Very. in my face. I lick my lips a lot, right? So it feel like that. Every time the wind hit me in the face, it feel like a frozen cooch. I didn't under, I, didn't, I didn't get it. I didn't he get bothers it. bothers me so bad. But anyway, <laughs> the week was cool, man. But I found, I looked at my phone and I found the topic, not the topic, I'm sorry, I found the question. And it's three questions in one because somebody wrote in another question that's adjacent to this question. So guess what? Why not? It's that time. March Madness. It's that time. I'm telling you. That's what I... It's that time. Ladies out there, do yourself a favor. It's March Madness. Don't bother your men while he's watching football. Also... Let him send you a referral code to get on FanDuel, DraftKings, or anywhere else. Get the referral code. You get 50, he gets 50. Y'all gamble it up together as a team and make some money. I got her on it. She lost all her money on some dumb stuff. She lost all her money on betting oh, on, on no. the All-Star game. No. I lost my money betting on what you told me to bet on. On the All-Star game. So... Don't take your bits from your husband. Nah, you can be taking from me. Unless he about. is just really good. At it. I'm good. But anyway, hold on. Let me go pull the question back. I'm talking about gambling. You got me distracted. He got himself to look. Y'all, at least it's the second time he's unprepared today. <laughs> I am. Got gambling, but when gambling on your mind, it feels divine. Y'all know. I bet it's about 12 or so hundred guys out there right now listening to the podcast saying, hell yeah, I can't wait to go send my woman this clip to let her get the fan do a referral. Somebody need, matter of fact, if you're out there and you don't have a man and you're interested in gambling, send me your email and I'll send you my referral code. That way we all can make some money. You feel me? But anyway. Boy, shut up. Because then they're going to be asking you for what they need to do. And if you ain't giving me the right plays, you don't need to be giving nobody else no plays either. We got it in right here. Don't want to hear it. We got it in. Don't want to hear it. Anyway, here we go. The question is, if you are, somebody wrote this from, this came about from like two or three episodes ago. But if you decide to be a stay-at-home dad, could you really? Consider yourself the head of a household. Also, adding on to that question, if your wife or your girlfriend, whoever, makes more than you do, can you still consider yourself the head of a household? I want to ask you that question. 
spiritually, <laughs> if you're leading in that way. No, nah, we ain't talking about no spiritual God uh-huh. ain't here right now. He's always omnipresent. But in this question... God ain't here. He told me check out. I mean, just based off definition of head of household, no. Like, <laughs> what? Like, what do you? What do you spearheading? All right. So let me ask you this then: If I try to make a decision, and you are the breadwinner of my house, can you look at me and say, "Shut up, little bitch! You can't say anything. You what? don't make what any you, money." What? Why would you give such a stupid extreme like example? That? Could you look at me? Like do you say, say right. that to me? Hell no. Nah. Exactly. Oh, well, so why would I, I say it to you? Beat. But this is, I'm just saying, could you like treat me as such? No. <laughs> what the fuck? What kind of example is this? Absolutely not. It's a poor example. What you get where I'm going with it? No, right? Bear, give a realistic example. All right, all Don't right, nobody want to hear that. If you are making more money than me, and well, let's say I'm a stay at home dad, you do all the other stuff, and I'm staying at home. I'm being um, Barrett Crocker right now, right? And if you were to come home and I'm not in the mood to do something, do I have a voice in the household decisions at that point? Or are you the main voice of the household because you are doing the work? No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't agree with that. I got another one for you then. Right on that one. Keep going. Keep talking about that. Well, because at the end of the day, no, no matter who claims head of household, the marriage is still a partnership. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like, it's still something that you're supposed to work towards together. So in that particular example, it, I don't, you know, whether or not you fight. <laughs> I don't want to hear how, head of household. I just think of your taxes. And so whether oh, or not no. you, whether or not you claim a head of household yeah, or no, not, I don't. Happened. I think that both parties should still be helpful in the marriage. It's like what we talked about yeah. last week. Like just because you are the breadwinner in the home doesn't mean that that rids you of your responsibilities in the home. Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, the person who is the stay-at-home person probably is expected to do more around the home, but it doesn't completely rid you of your responsibility. So I would think that if it is a like a working w- woman and a man that stay at home, if he needed help with something, I'm sure she would help. Mm-hmm. You now, know what, what I'm saying? Now, 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 what if you and that same guy Got into an argument, said a little debate, a little back and forth. Does he have the right to even, does he have a leg to stand on in the argument by letting you, what this is, but by letting you make more, I, I go to work and he stay at home? Does he have a leg to stand in an argument? Yeah. I feel like anybody has a leg to stand in an argument as long as okay. it's like a valid point. As long as it's a valid point, because with you and I, if it's an issue, then I'm going to stand on my but point see, to the, the end. But see, that's the thing though. You, be, you, you being the woman, and I'm the man. I know it sounds real chauvinistic, whatever. You being a woman and I'm the man. If I'm being, a, if you're being a stay at home mom and then I'm doing whatever I'm doing, hustling, doing jobs, this, that, and the third, um, you still have a voice because I'm the sole provider. I can't, I don't think I have it in me to ask you to be the provider of a household. Like, hey, India. Now, I hope you get there I one day. I appreciate that. No, now, no, no, no. It's, I it's hope funny you get there. I know you love it. You love it. It's funny because my mom says... But I want you to get there one day. Says, <laughs> Shut up. It's funny because my mom talks about this all the time. I want to be a kept man. Because she, she, my mom be like... I get um, killed. What my, my mom say, like she says this often, she was like, y'all are so blessed. She was like, but God always blesses families um, when the when the man in the house takes care of his house. Like, she was she was like, she was like, y'all will always, and, and now, t- t- take this, don't don't take this any other way than how I'm saying it. Again, this is what my mama says, and I'm just repeating it. But she said that God always blesses um, household when when the man is doing what he's supposed to do in the house. Mm. And so, like, you my about, mom you mean by really, like, things. yeah, okay. yes, yes. All right. Um, but I also think that there is a way to provide without yeah, I'm not talking making about money, the person right. feel less than because yeah. you are the provider of the house. Right, right. No matter how you provide, too long care if you're selling sex or socks. No matter how you provide, I'm just talking about providing for your household, providing for your family. No matter how you get it in, God bless you. Get it in however you need to. And but, to me, I think... Like, if we're talking man in a house. Okay. And th- this is just how I've always, like, wanted a man to be. Like I'm trying to retire right to, now and let her take over. Just to be able, 
I think it says something about a man when he wants to do more than the house, the more more for the house. Um, I was listening to a podcast last week, and mm-hmm. it was um, Kadeem. Hold on, hold on, let's stop. Give it up for you listening to podcasts. What is, what is that, what is that last name? Kadeem and Val Ellis. Yes, yeah. I was listening to her, and she was on uh, T D Jake's daughter, uh, Sarah Jake Roberts' podcast. T D Jake's got a daughter. Mm-hmm. She got a podcast too. Yeah, it ain't better than she, the drill. She is like a big deal. <laughs> it ain't better than TD. She's a big deal, but so I was listening to their episode together. Okay. And she, so she was talking about so that couple have been together for twenty years, and she was talking about how you know in the beginning of their relationship, you know all of the struggles that they went through mm-hmm. in the beginning of the relationship, and they were both saying. Basically, you know, a lot of times in relationship, it's not that one person is the provider for the entirety of the relationship. Yeah. And how, um, like, Sarah had seen her parents switch roles. Ebbs when and needed. flows. Exactly. And right so on. the same thing happened with Kadena Ellis. You know, when he, both of them were struggling, neither of them had money. And so she started working. Yep. And she told a story where she... You know, was doing makeup. She went, got a job at the mat counter. They moved back to uh, New York. And so she was doing that and she was making the bulk of the money for the family. And so she was only, I think she was doing that job mostly to keep her insurance because DeVal was trying to be an actor at the time. And basically he didn't get insurance until he had worked like did a certain number of like commercials or whatever and so he he told her he was like you know as soon as you know I get to this point and we're able to get this insurance <laughs> like I'm go- like you can quit your job or whatever yeah. and then she also said that there was like a time where she cried on Thanksgiving because mm. she had to leave work and go to the mall this was when you know Black Friday and you know they you were having everybody work, buddy do those crazy you gotta go hours to and so she cried and she said that, th- that he looked at her and he said this is the last time that you will have to do this big big ups Jimmy. and so you know it, I guess it's kind of the opposite of what last week when I was talking about Tabitha Brown and her husband yes you where he was that. the provider while she was trying to get her start and now she has you know made enough money to where he was able to quit the his job reverse. and now he can work on the things that he wants to but do but check it out stop right there the let me tap in though she quit his job her job will let him quit his job I'm sorry to let him do what he wants to do why is somebody calling me from work right now to let him do what he wants to do the thing about it is she quit and he just to sit on his ass he got up and started doing something else you feel me yeah but some that's people what I'm quit some people let their wife quit their job and they gonna sit back and be a couch potato but no i don't think it. they quit their job a lot first of all there's not a, we say stay at home wife there's not a lot of stay at home wives it's just stay at home moms okay oh, yeah, 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 and yeah, so yeah, if yeah. you are sitting in the house and you have children at home that is a job itself Ain't it though. Whether it's one kid or three kids. Ain't like it, it is a job itself. So I feel like that statement is invalid. Like okay. if you have a stay at home wife and she quits her job and she's just sitting at home every day, like living a life, not as- aspiring to do anything, I feel like that's not like <laughs> maybe that's not who you should be with because I don't think anybody wants to be with anyone who doesn't have aspirations. No, hell no. If you ain't got no you know, dreams, or man, wants get up to out of here. Um, do something more with their life. So like I said, the, the, the stay-at-home wife and the stay-at-home mom, that, these are two completely different things we're, all talking, all right. <laughs> we're talking about. Well, watch this, though. I got another one for you. So listen, with all that being said, so we just go ahead and put a bow on that. With all that being said, to piggyback off that question, another one came up. Says it's going 50 50 with a woman and expecting her to be submissive, wild or not. So, me, it's me and Indy, we both working, right? We both got full time jobs, but when I, when I get home, I still have expectations of my wife and I expect her to submit to me. Is that unrealistic? Yes, Ooh. I'm telling you why. So, here's the thing first of all, we're talking about. Okay, let's go here. 50-50, right? Okay. So say, for instance, we, we, we're we both working full-time and we're splitting everything 50-50. And 
First of all, that's a roommate. So I'm cool with being a roommate. Um, no, second we get of all, out. I would like I. I would never choose a guy that would make me pay 50-50 with everything. Like, I just, that's just bizarre to me. <laughs> um. hey, the fact, the mere fact that she's been a kept woman like her whole <laughs> life baffles me sometimes. But I will say hey, this. Listen to the privilege. I will say this. She's I, a I, No, I will say this. It ain't like I'm just like a spoiled person or anything like that. I have. You got lucky throughout this. your life. I, no, no, no. Rolling the dice and hitting I had second. a very. <sighs> rough childhood okay i had a, a childhood of struggle like heartache and i feel very blessed in my okay. adult years that i don't have to still live like that and i'm gonna because that's a conversation for a whole nother day mm. and i'm gonna leave that where it's at mm. now when it comes to submission yeah, talk about it. I'm that looking. is something that I believe. Like that, that is like one of the things that I will tie back um, to being biblical, because I also okay. feel like if he is not a man of God, if he's not a man of honor, a, a man of his word, then you have no reason to submit to this man. Mm-hmm. If your if your husband isn't submitting his life to God. You shouldn't be submitting your life to him. Oh, you Does that make it? sense? See, so TD Jake's daughter podcast I'm got not, her <laughs> Stick thing, she's a deaconess. So, like, outside of the money factor, and you splitting everything 50-50, I I feel like if he's a man of God oh. and so I'm bring a man right. of honor and a man of his word, I feel like he's not gonna ask you to split nothing. I need that 50/50. church organ right now. I need that church. <laughs> Put, I'm putting that church organ in at the post pro. Um, church organ right here. Because again, if, if the expect if the expectation is 50-50 in a committed married relationship, mm-hmm. you have a roommate. But well, what's and so I, bad I, like about I, having a roommate? We just having good sex from time to time. I don't. Is there I, that, that, wrong that, with that, that's wrong having not, a roommate? If that's what you want, then fine. Everyone has free will to choose the life that they desire. I'm just completely 100% not interested in that. Well, let's keep it right here, man, because I like these conversations that we're having about like child and stuff. Now, with that same kind of overlaying thing that we're talking about right now, have you ever compromised your job to be with anybody? Or would you ever compromise your job to be with somebody? I've had like three jobs before you. So, I that's not, about, I was like, you talking you about me? No, you <laughs> I'm like, be in. I've been with you like for all of my working years. I mean, great. I I have had a job like I my first job I had when I was fifteen. Mm-hmm. So, um, you're not talking about me. So who? What? What are you referring to in this? Just in, in general. This question? So yeah, meaning we've been into it. And we've been arguing, and sometimes you've been at work. Have you want to just walk off the job because you can't focus on your job to then go home and try to fix your relationship? Or is that unreasonable to ask? Hell no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not leaving my job to come That's home and saying. argue with you. That's what I'm saying. Bear has done that. I sure have. That's what I was about to say. Y'all know Bear me. Bear has done that. Bear left his job, came knocking on my on my college uh, door. Y'all doing right. And he stood outside. Straightening. Need some straightening. He not stood like that. Outside. Not like that. I'm, I'm not a stalker, all right? He but stood we need outside. Some straightening, though. He knocked. I didn't come to the door. And he went home. Well, no, you didn't. You eventually came to the no, door. No, I didn't. So what happened? No, I didn't. I just got a free day off then. That's all it was. Maybe I just wanted a day off. And she thought I was coming to see her. No. You were mad because I wouldn't. For one, I wasn't even answering you. I guess it just sent you over the edge. The it nigga is. came to my apartment, knocking on the door. I did not answer the answer the door. It is. I already made, so no, nobody should nobody should be leaving their job to go home and argue or settle a conflict. The only time you should be leaving your job for your significant other if it's an emergency or if you want some fun midday sex. You should not be leaving your job to go argue. That? When have you ever done either one of those? Things? You could. That's a, that, I mean, that's up to you. I I'm just saying. Like I, I, I one, I have things. a friend, a couple who, well, granted, she was pregnant and the hormones were like raging, but she had her husband leaving so they could go smashing the car on the lunch break. She so, pregnant? How that barely get by? I'm asking. We have pregnant sex all the time. But that, and first of all, maybe the they age, had a truck. Say less. 
So say, that's all you had to say in the beginning. Like I said, nobody should be leaving their job to go argue with their significant other. That it's insane. And I don't even think that was the original question that you asked. So what you phrased it the first time whoa, was whoa, basically whoa, see, like giving up right on here. your dream or giving up on your job for a significant other. I didn't even no. know you were originally talking about an argument. It says, have you ever compromised your job because of your relationship? Is what because I of the status of your relationship. Yeah. No. Why would you, why? Why would you do that? Because well, well, at the end well, of the day, the person can come and go, but you need that back. But your you need question, that back to take care of your responsibilities. But your question is good, though. Ask it again. What? Have you ever given up on your dreams because of your relationship? And you shouldn't do that either. Here's the thing. That's what I'm saying. Like, when, you're all talking, this. when you're talking, well, we're, we're talking, you know, being with somebody and choosing the right people. The right person is not going to make you or require you to give up on a dream of yours. Hell no. They are going to help you figure it out, help you make it work. Like even, okay, say for instance, that like I will give this example nightmare. just because like I've heard this scenario before. Say for instance, I wanted to go back to school for something yep. and you was like, absolutely not. Nope. And I would be like, okay, well, I'm just going to have to figure it out without you, without you. Like you would have to come to me and give me a very valid reason as to why I shouldn't go back to school. Mm. If it's not a, okay, you can go back to school, but maybe like maybe not right now. Maybe let's wait three months. Let's pay off some of, these, some of this debt and then you go back to school. That makes sense to me. Okay. But for you to just be like, absolutely not. It's a stupid idea. You oh, I ain't leave. never stopped nobody from getting their education, man, ever in life. You got somebody holding you down from being wiser or making better decisions you need to leave that person so it's not and what it's I'm saying. also understanding that marriage is about sacrifice but i have i um i know another couple they you were know a living lot of they're living they were living their life happy as ever in one city where the guy got upgraded he he, he got promoted but that promotion also required them to uproot their lives and move to another state did she want to move to the state no Absolutely not. But you said I asked somebody somebody has to be willing to compromise. And I feel like there was nothing in the original city that she was like, I have to stay here for this. Okay. But you know, maybe we can move back here in a couple of years. Like I, I'm just trying to climb the ladder right now. Hmm. I'm just trying to climb the ladder and get to a certain place in my career. Mm-hmm. And she saw that that was very important to him. And she was like, okay. He made the right decision. That's fine. That's the woman he needs to be with. You know, we will do this. Yeah. You know, with with the intention that this move won't be permanent. Um, So, like, when when you're talking about, like, finding a partner and, like, them them the kind of people you need to be looking for, Mm. honestly. Like. If if Barry came to me and was like, "Hey, <laughs> I got a job. Like, I got hired." We in... going to LA? No. See, whoa, 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 whoa. See, all right. Hold say on, if he stop said the like, then. "No, no, no." I'm saying like, because if you said, She's "Hey," so contradictory. No, I'm saying if you said I got a job in LA, I would, I would say, Let's go. I would say okay with with the understanding that you want to work. It is a big bag. And <laughs> it could be twenty thousand dollars if somebody give me a job. You're in not LA, leaving LA for twenty thousand dollars, please. Take me back. I mean, to LA. <laughs> the move needs to make sense a little bit. See that she holding me back from my dreams right now. The nightmare. Bear, okay, Bear. If you said I'm the dream, if you said she's right the now, nightmare. if you said right now, India, I'm dead serious. I want to move to LA, and you know, I want to be a comedian. Like, I just want to move to L.A. for a couple years and see if we can make a shake. And I'm going to be like, OK, we got two years in L.A. I don't want to move. I'm going to make that very clear. I do, I do not want to move to L.A. So so we're going here with the intention that this is not going to be a permanent decision. So what are we going to do for money in the meantime? You're going to strip? Oh, I teach Pilates now. But I'm talking about like, what well, you do, job. Man, you know what? You're right. You can so, find <laughs> plenty of Pilates jobs yeah. in L.A. I also have experience in events. I have project management experience on my resume. Like, okay, so at the end of the day, and, and that's sounds why, like we going to LA to me. That's why I also think that as a stay at home mom or wife, that it yeah. is important for you to have your own skills so that you can, you know, have something to fall back on if your family needs it. And so that was the thing with 
and uh, Kadeen. Like okay. she knows how to do makeup. Yeah. She was a make. She was a makeup artist. Like she did that for a long time. So she went back, picked up her makeup kit. Hey man, for you being a certified Pilates, and made it. Like, it made it shake. <laughs> so, I, listen, I went to check her out the other day. I peeked in on her a little bit. She was doing her thing. Women in there sweating and stretching. <laughs> I saw. Her. Yeah. So, marriage is about sacrifice. Definitely. Definitely. And compromised. And if you feel like the person that you've chosen is not willing to do that with you or you're single and you're dating and you don't know that the person you're dating is willing to be that for you, then that is not the person that you need to be with. Now, I saw somebody else say something. Speaking of this, I'm going to stay right here with it. If you look back on your life... And at the time that I asked you to marry me, if you had to ask yourself that question, would you marry yourself? What would the answer have, would have been? Back then? Yeah. Probably no. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. I always wanted to know that. I I saw that post, by the way, so, from um, I think it was uh, my man Russell Wilson in Sierra. When we got married, I didn't feel like Why wouldn't you marry was, yourself, though? Um, yeah. Let's talk about it. I knew I made a mistake. I didn't feel Ooh, like I was 100% ready. I was very young. I was only 23. And why did I, you say no? Could have saved me some heartache. I knew that I wanted to out. marry you. I just felt like <laughs> I felt like I couldn't live up to you know, the wife that maybe you wanted me to be. Like I said, I was very young. So mm. I, I got married at 23. Was it? Yeah, I was 23 when we got yeah. married. And so I remember like on my wedding day, I was crying constantly. And so I didn't feel like I was making a mistake, but I, at the, oh, in the same sense, it was just like... she made a mistake. We should be married. Oh my God. Shut up. I'm a I bachelor never, again. I never felt like I was making a mistake, okay, okay. but it was more so a matter of do you, are you sure that you want to do this right now? Mm. Because you kind of don't have nothing to bring to the table. Like I had been looking for jobs. I, I couldn't even, even back then I was working, but I couldn't, I wasn't making enough to contribute to the household bills. Oh, Eventually I, I had gotten there, you know, because I, I ended up with another job, but I couldn't even find a job making mm. a decent salary. So it was tough. Yeah, so, it was tough. like, when we got married, I was making. Ooh, what was I making? Yeah, you I was. Tell about what you were no, making. Just I know was you making, making a lot of money. Did I start working at Southgate before, or after, before we got married? So yes, it was like a couple months before we got married. I don't know. I was making thirteen dollars an hour. I think. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Somebody out there said big money, or maybe like twelve fifty an hour. Big bucks, no whammies. But I knew that that salary was not matching the life that I would have ever wanted. Granted, I was Mm. I was much younger then, but it was still a matter of. But that's based off money. Had you got laid off, there was no way that I could like just based on skills. Yeah. There was no way that I could find something oh, to yeah. provide job, for the family. Like, if Barry had gotten laid off and they was like, and Barry wasn't even making that much money back then. I was making balling. You, mean? I you weren't. Money. I always had my business when I met you. You had the business, but Sony? Come on. Oh, I'm talking about what I was doing. <laughs> Trying to play me. She was in my employee there too. So she's been robbing me blind right under my face, and I didn't even see it. That's that's not the whole true. time. <laughs> she's been stealing the church's money, and I'm still sitting back, looking at my pockets, pulling out lint. God bless somebody. Come get her from me. Well, shut up. So, anyways, it, like I said, it wasn't a matter of like, do I want to marry you or anything? Yeah. It was just a lot of things going through my head. So, when I was growing up, honestly, my mom provided like a lot for the family. My mom was in charge of the finances. My mom made the bulk of the money. She's always made the bulk of the money, you know, between she and my dad. And so, I knew that what she was providing for our family. 
back then, mm. I absolutely couldn't do it. But now that it's been almost eight years since we've gotten married, obviously a lot has changed in those eight years. Like my skill Facts. set is completely different. I, I, like I know so much more. And so it, if that scenario were to happen now, I wouldn't feel any pressure for needing to bring, find a way to bring money in. Like uh, it, it, it's not like he could quit. He, he would quit. And I would be like, I have no idea quit right what I would do to make money. I I got some stuff, okay. <laughs> so that that was that was my only thing. We Sound just like got, got married, control. very young. Got you. I'm gonna ask myself the same question then. And it could I? Would I had married myself? She got there right. I would have married myself. I married myself right now, and I would have married myself back then. I would have been so ready to marry myself. And I don't even I, know I how you saying that. Wrong. What you mean? Financially, yeah, absolutely. But you are a hot mess as a person. Crazy as hell, me. You literally finna sit up here and act like never stopped. I was so much fun. I said, the fun, fun. yeah, he was so much fun. But his communication skills absolutely sucked. He he was not no. His communication skills sucked. He had a lot to learn. What we doing here? It was a. I'm just having a good time. How he. It was him believing that marriage should be a certain way based on what he had seen in his house. She gone. We both she had gone. some work that needed to be done at such an early age. But I would have married myself and figured it out. You know what I'm saying? Like you did. I would have said, yes, marry me, sir. And I would have went on about my day and probably went to L.A. That's probably what I would have done. I'm about to go pop jobs. As soon as we get done recording, I'm about to go pop jobs. <laughs> I've said that far too many times, but I wanted to talk about all this stuff. But in the meantime, in between time, if you're out there right now, no matter if you're making twelve fifty or two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, just make sure you supporting you support your partner. I don't care what they doing, man. I always support them. If they doing something crazy, you gotta support them. But for the most part, support significant other. That's my tip. And I'm just playing. But I am about to give y'all a hell of a tip. And here we go. Note it down. I got the keys, the keys, the keys. Now, oh, <laughs> you, I don't got to say it. If you're looking in the camera right now, this relationship is brought to you by the smooth taste of Red Bull. It's fire, too. I ain't had one in a long time. Like, um, one with sugar in it. At first, I didn't really like the one with sugar, sugar well, free. You're finna be skidding up in me then. What you mean? Because you finna have my pH balance all the way off. What you mean? Sugar ass Red Bull. I eat donuts sometimes. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about my relationship. Now she's talking about some skeet in her vagina, and she's just getting nasty. <laughs> my relationship right now is comes from a, another podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> They're retaining. They're If y'all watching on the camera, I just spit all over the mic. I'm like, God bless. Um, it comes from another podcast episode where I was like, man, listen, man, just know how to talk to women no more, man. Y'all need some help. So I want to guide you guys through. And I'm gonna give you three. Listen to me right now. Three text messages to send after. You've had an amazing time or after you met a young lady or after you've talked to her on the phone all night and you want to wake up the next morning and send her a text message. Listen, good morning. Ain't going to fly. How, how would you feel if me and you went out on a date and the next day I text you good morning? Period. That's it? That's it. You know a lot of men are doing that right now. I mean, I'll, I'm not for dry conversation. So that's what I'm saying. And I will say this. I... <laughs> How would you feel about that? So here's why the dating scene would suck for me. I don't like texting. Me either. I do not like texting. And I feel like the best way to get to know someone is through verbal conversation. Take a mile. And so if you are too busy to talk to me on the phone, we are going to be going on dates, meeting up in person to talk. I am not going to sit up and text anybody all day. All right, say what you got to say. I feel like texting should be for quick things. You know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying, but check this out, though. We talking about after you've done something or after you've had a long conversation with that person. It could be over the phone. It could be like y'all go out on a date. 
on on a nice dinner and we had a long a good night and the next morning I want to send you something because people do that like right now somebody like damn man I've been looking for something like this we're here you go the first text message I wrote it down this is what you write good morning then you put a period I was thinking about how much you like if it was India how much you like rock climbing so enjoy and then I send her like a little boom, either rock climbing emoji or like a rock climbing gift card with an emoji attached. She's going to be like, oh, you paid attention last night. And you're going to get that. How you going to feel about that? I'm going to be very excited. All right, boom. Number two. Next thing. Good morning. Exclamation point. You got to do it sometime. I know you have a lot going on today, but I believe in you. And when you get done doing whatever it is, let's talk about it and go out. Or right, let's go out and talk about it. Insert date. I'm sorry. Insert time and place of where y'all going to talk about it. Boom. How you feel about that? Effort. I like it. Because just imagine, right? You talking to me the whole night. You're like, man, tomorrow I got a 7.30 a.m. private lesson. Then after that, I got five classes of Pilates. Then after that, I got to go out, get Blake. Ready for the X, Y, Z? Like, all right, cool. I know you got a lot going on. This is like me and you ain't together. Like you say, you're a single mom. I know you got a lot going on, baby. Listen up. This is what we're going to do. Now, I see your text message. How you feel? I like it. Fire. I'm on a roll. Last but not least, here's another one. Good morning. Period. Was thinking about last night and just wanted to thank you for holding space for me and listening. <laughs> It really meant a lot, and I can't wait to talk to you later. Bam! Come on, somebody! Who wrote that? Cause who, who, you ain't never said holding space. All my life. Grinding all my life. What you mean? This has been me forever. First of all, <laughs> I've never run out of things to say. And you know, man, come on, man. I can sell you know, water to know. a well. I'm a hustler, you baby. Know. I can sell fire in hell. He really what doesn't are you run out about? of things to say i will say that i'm telling you i can talk you out of your underwear oh you're so funny Ooh. next thing you know sitting on my lap boy doing a wild thing but for everybody out there that needed a little bit of guidance i gave it to you right there you say those things in a text message and then you're annoying <laughs> and then you get the party going when you get home Cause really, if you really like, but no, 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 cause we ain't talking. We ain't trying to get into nobody's panties. We're not trying to, to get I'm no party going when we get home. See, I ain't say that type of party. Y'all can just have a party vibe. It should be good vibes between you and your lady, or you and your significant other. The moral of the story is, man, put it out there, man. Let her know how you felt. Don't just send a good morning and an emoji no more. It's played out. Women is smarter now. They don't want that. Women are smarter now. They want a little what? bit more. Like back in the day, I'm talking about, I'm of a certain age. I'm of a certain ilk. I'm of a certain cloth. Back in the day. Oh, my God. When you were 19, I could send you, hey, good morning, with like a heart, smiley face and some Oreos. And you would like that shit. Matter of fact, you would like it so much. You would send me some breasts back. She used to always send me news of her titties. Like always. You liked them. I can't, I can't even sniff They're not the t- same titties no more, though, so I don't send them no more. Yeah, <laughs> we have sex with a shirt on now. What the fuck? That is not true. I ain't seen the titties that since That is not true. I'm usually in my PJs. See what I'm saying? And then I, I have to s- take it all off. I haven't seen the tit in 2009. You it's are crazy. a lie. You always have my titties in your mouth. Come on, man. Don't act like I'm Blake. <laughs> he was you one. are. Blake wanted to. Come on, man. It's nasty. But anyway... All that to be said, if you want tits in your mouth, send those good morning texts out. Yeah. Let's go get them. Hit it, Jack! Oh. WWID. What would India do? Kick it! Is it okay to masturbate Whoa. while married? My Whoa. wife hates the idea of me masturbating, but I've always thought it was natural. It's only about once a month, especially if we're both not feeling like having sex for a while. I need someone outside help or I need some outside help to see if I'm in the wrong or not. 
Apparently, her stepdad growing up had a porn addiction enough to where she had to watch what she wore. And he had to go to therapy for it when she was growing up. She says it reminds her of him. I can see why she doesn't like it. If I, but I feel like it shouldn't affect us any help. Okay, so let's start with the stepdad here. Yikes. Um, if she had to watch what she wore yes, different and him more. masturbating reminds her of him, that tells me that it was probably a little more than porn. A lot more than porn. Yeah, it's different. That's disgusting. Yeah. and it, But if he's watching like but, stepdaughter porn, then he needs to get help. For one, I don't think there's anything wrong with masturbating while, pre- while uh, married. Because, boy, we we know what she um, got. <laughs> she got a whole toolbox. Secondly, I like to have my masturbation time for me. That's that's <laughs> that's my me time. I don't... I prefer to masturbate alone, okay? So... I ain't stopping you. When you? he's saying that he masturbates, is it in front of her? Oh, I see. Are you because I'm confused? <laughs> I'm confused, like... Could could he not just continue masturbating alone? Like, how would she? Barrett never knows when I masturbate. Never know. <laughs> Barrett is never here when I masturbate. Never here. So first time knowing that too. If he's only doing it once a month, are you just masturbating in front of her? And are you skating on her knee or something? Like, like what's happening here? Bro, get subtracted about yourself. Because to me, what is the conversation for? It, how did this come up in conversation? Did she just randomly ask, like, hey, do you <laughs> well, masturbate? Well, that's how you beat me. Because quite frankly, if you masturbate, you ain't I, don't, I don't care to ask when, when was the last time he masturbated. I don't care. So let me smell your hand. It smells like lotion. Obviously, this you young lady me. has, you know, different trauma. Like mm. that's something serious. Yeah, yeah. I'm making light of it, but yeah, she need to get. And help maybe she should go to therapy to heal from the perviness of her stepdad. That sounds disgusting. But I would just think that if you know, it, it's just once a month. I would just think that it's not a problem. Yeah. I get how it ties to porn. Because he's probably using porn to masturbate. Once a month? Oh, my God. You see more porn on um, on stars. As soon as they play Tummy Episode 3, they got the fuck it. So I don't have... So the issue to me is not that he masturbates to... Is that he... It, the issue to me is not that he masturbates while watching porn. Hmm. If it's a porn issue, my issue would be you watching it too much and the unrealistic expectations that porn puts in relationships yeah yeah yeah. that would be my issue because a lot of times when i masturbate i do not watch porn i can get there in fantasy land in my mind so it just doesn't matter freak nasty she can't wait to get done with the podcast she got (laughs) the legs she's ready to i also have like very old pictures of barrett in my phone so i don't need to go to I don't I that's just me I don't even look like that no more it looks the same <laughs> you know what I'm saying it be, it's, it be your own people around they hate on you so bad they hate on you so much because they want to be you so don't take it as a compliment when they say something like that. deep down inside I ain't want you to go she want to be me a minute ago she looking in the mirror my butt getting big. My butt getting big. It is. Pilates making my rump nice and round. Nice and round. <laughs> Maybe so. I'm proud of her. I hope so. But I ain't going to hate on her like she hate on me, though. You know what I'm saying? Hate her. But I know how I look. <laughs> the same that you do. I love me some me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> this is my advice. Don't marry a Leo. Because he's so into his self. You know it don't make no sense. I don't need to tell me, oh, you look nice. No. Guess what? I got me. Well, All that's that be the end, guys. All that being said, <laughs> if you like some porn, get one off, then go in your woman and knock her off too. So is that is this what you do? You masturbate and then no, have no, sex no, in the no, same no. day? And you can. I mean, you, you could. 
Yeah, you you've done it before, probably. That's why you like? I mean, hey, you, you now you stuttering and stammering. I have exactly. So why can't but a man do I'm it? I'm just asking, like, this is just me knowing about you. Is that what you do? Not on a regular basis, <laughs> but I've done it for sure. <laughs> If I wake up in the morning, want to go ahead and just ease my pain out in the evening, afternoon, and we get busy at night, so be it. As long as I'm still busting your guts now, we should oh be good. Oh, my gosh. All right, we're going to wrap this episode up. What it is, ho. What's up? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me get in the moment. As long as I'm still doing my due diligence and filling up that all right, enough. I'm just going to put it out there. Tell the people that you find me. India Marie on Instagram. Whoa. That's all I got for today. Find me at Beat Love 1911 on all social avenues. Make Be sure, sure that you go to YouTube. Yeah, I was going to go ahead. That's your new thing. You say that then. And make sure that you go to YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Bing. Drop us a like. Boom. The more you interact, the more people find us. Yes, Lord. And there you go. Follow She and Our Podcast on Instagram. It's where the reels be at. It be real, real, where the reels are at. And also, hit us up in the email, She and Our Podcast at gmail.com. And, man, thank y'all. Um, hopefully, next week we'll have somebody else on. But I, in the mean- I was going to say, I feel really confident that we'll be able to announce. We've just been so busy, but I feel like we can announce a live show. The oh, goal is for, I don't think they've hit you back yet, but I Pull feel up. in my spirit that May is going to be a good time for us to have a live show. So be on the lookout I'm for that. Up. Hopefully we can drop the tickets to a live show by by April. I'm pulling up on somebody if they don't answer my email. But in the meantime, in between time, it's been real it's been fun. She, she, she I, 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 I.